Hey guys, so now that we've talked about the different types of collisions you can have, you should know that some questions won't ask you for the final velocity or the mass to calculate something, but instead, there's some conceptual questions that will ask you to identify what type of collision you have. In this video, what I'm gonna do is show you a step-by-step -step way to do that. So let's get started. All right, so we can use a series of simple checks to determine the type of collision. Now, the way these questions usually work is they'll give you the masses and the velocities, and based on that information, you have to be able to, to figure out what type of collision you have, okay? And we can use very simple checks. There's three checks you can use in this order, right? Based on, and these checks are based on the key characteristics of each type. For example, you might remember that in elastic collisions, elastic collisions, um, kinetic energy is conserved. So if you can see that kinetic energy was conserved, then you can deduce, you can conclude that the collision must have been elastic, okay? So the first thing you're gonna check for is you're going to check if the total momentum of the system in the beginning equals the total momentum of the system at the end. So you're basically checking, does the left side of this equation equal the right side of this equation? Remember I told you that every collision question in every type of collision, momentum is conserved. So if you're given a problem where the left side of this equation does not match the right side of the equation, that violates conservation of momentum, which is not possible in a collision. Therefore, it means that this collision is not possible. And you can see some questions like that. Um, it, it never happened. A collision like that would never happen. And you'd have to know how to identify that. So that's the first thing. Now, if the collision is possible, it's going to be one of these three types. So if it passes the first check, then you're going to check for other things. The second thing you're going to check for is the simplest one, which is if the two objects have the same final velocity, what that means is that after colliding, they actually stuck together, right? If I move with the four to the right and this guy moves with the four to the right as well, it means that we're moving together. So in that case, they stuck together which means that this is a completely inelastic equation. It's pretty easy to check, you just look at its numbers. Now the last check is you're going to check for elastic um, collision. Remember that in elast uh, when you have an elastic collision, you can use this extra equation here. This is the extra equation. So what you're gonna ask yourself is, is it true that does the left side equal the right side? If that's true, you have an elastic collision. If that's not true, then you have an inelastic collision. Inelastic collision, I call it the default one because you have no direct way of checking if it's inelastic. The way you know it's inelastic, it's because it, it failed check two or three, okay? So the collision is possible, but it was not this, not this, therefore by default it has to be inelastic, okay? Very straightforward, just check these three things. Is the collision possible? And then you start checking, that they stick together? Is it elastic? And if it fails these two here, then it has to be inelastic by default, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do an example and then I have a practice problem for you guys to try. So here I have two blocks on a flat, move on a flat, smooth surfaces. So flat and smooth means it is like this and there is no friction, okay? So, um, object A is to the left of object B. Object A has um, mass two kilograms, B has mass one kilogram. For each set of initial and final velocities, so I'm gonna give you initial and final velocities, and I want you to tell me what type of collision is this. Um, and we're gonna say that going to the right is a direction of positive for both of these problems, okay? So here, the initial velocity, VA initial, is three, VA, VB initial, VB initial is two, VA final is 2.33, and VB final is 3.33, okay? The first thing I have to check is, is this even a possible collision? And to check that, I have to see that the right side uh, matches the left side of the conservation momentum equation. M1v1, M2v2, um, I'm going to just put the masses here, two parentheses, one parentheses, two parentheses, 
one parenthesis. If you're solving these questions sort of quickly, um, you can just do this. You don't have to write m1, v1, m2, v2. All right, so two, um, the initial velocity of the two is three. All, the, all of them are positive here. The initial velocity of the one is two. The initial velocity, uh, the final velocity of the two is 2.33. And the final velocity of the one, one is b, is 3.33, okay? I'm gonna fast forward here. If you combine all this stuff, you get that eight equals eight. This is true, which means this is possible, okay? What does that mean? That means you keep going to try to figure out whether it's completely inelastic, elastic, or inelastic in this sequence. So we pass check number one. Let's do check number two. Are the final velocities the same? The final velocities are not the same. Therefore, all I can tell by that is that it's not a completely inelastic, which means you keep going. Let's check for the third one. Um, do these velocities match? So the two velocities for one equal the two velocities for two. The velocities for one are here, and it's three kind of tight here, three plus 2.33, okay? And then equal the velocities for initial and final for the second object, which are these here, two plus 3.33. And I hope you see here right away that this is 5.33 equals 5.33. It matched, it is correct. If they are correct, notice how this is a not the same, this is the same, um, and this is same. It is the same, so if these match, you have an elastic collision, and then you're done. Boom. So this is an elastic collision um, because of uh, the third check was correct. Um, it was true. All right, so the same thing here, just different numbers. Let's set it up, A and B. A, B, 2, 1. The velocities for A are 2 positive, and one positive, two, and one, and for B, it's six and eight, six and eight. So these are initial and these are final. Let's do the checks. First, let's check if this is a possible collision by using the full equation. I'm gonna put the velocities here. This is initial of the two, initial of the one, initial of final of the two, final of the one. All the numbers are positive as well. And I have four plus six equals two plus eight. I get that 10 equals 10. That is true. So this means this equation, um, this collision is possible. This is check number one. Let's go to check number two. Um, check number two, we're checking if V1 final equals V2 final. Um, they're not the same. Six is not eight. Therefore, I know that this is not completely inelastic. The third check is whether these velocities, um, it's this check right here, right? So I can just put the initial and final of one, add them up. 2 plus 1, is that the same as the initial and final for 2, 6 plus 8? And obviously these are not the same, so you know that this is not elastic. It failed the elastic test, which means it defaults to being an inelastic collision. Defaults to being an inelastic collision. Cool. That's it for this one. Try the practice problem. Let me know if you guys have any questions.